or even as you are taking your children to boarding schools even as you are taking any school pray for them because you know <laughs> there are things happening you know in these schools there there are horrible things happening in these schools and you have to be ready spiritually okay pray pray for your children because are we are, are we going to stop our children from going to boarding schools simply because these things are happening absolutely not but what i'm saying is we have to dominate those places we have to introduce the holy spirit in those places okay we have to introduce our children to god so that they can introduce god to those places they can take god to those places so that some of these things that we went through some of us should not be repeating themselves it shouldn't be a vicious cycle now that we know better let's do better okay so we can do this we can do this we can dominate those boarding schools <laughs> hi guys this is your girl Zagello, and you know how we do welcome to my youtube channel welcome to daily with Zagello. today i want to talk about something that uh, i really didn't think was an issue until a few years ago okay so i'm going to be talking about boarding school for some of us that went to boarding school even if you didn't go to boarding school and maybe you want you know we are growing we're becoming parents some of us are older siblings and we're the ones that are you know manage the affairs of our younger siblings and the decision making what school they they will you would want them to go to so i just want to share some of my experiences that i didn't think were an issue until very recently so keep watching okay so, um i went to two boarding schools in total but i won't be mentioning names uh for the sake of <laughs> where the law okay so um i was pretty young when i went into boarding school i was 12 13 and it was honestly one day, these are my experiences and loose these are loose Kelly's experiences some might have different experiences and that's okay okay i just want to share my experiences as a person you you know you are allowed to have your own opinion that's fine uh so i yeah i was 12 13 years old and uh honestly i'm just going to be very honest with you guys it was traumatic <laughs> i didn't accept this until very recently you know when i look back and i think like the ptsd that i developed because of some of the things that i went through in boarding school guys and i was pretty young you know i wasn't very developed i didn't you know at that time i really wasn't you know used to staying away from my mom so yeah so when i went into boarding school um i was you know excited you know happy to be far away from home you know you know most of us have that ka ka thing okay it was actually recently when i was like wait a minute like what was that you know when you look at when you look back at certain experiences you're like i was what was that like what was that you know so uh when i went into boarding school uh obviously there were kids older than me you know my seniors and everything and some of them were not the kindest to me you know it was okay it, somehow it was tradition you know like grade eight and all but then that experience all in all the i i feel like i went through bullying i was bullied honestly because you know in as much as it was tradition to treat grade eights like that it really had a mental impact on me and it also um hurt a lot and as i said most of those experiences gave me ptsd so uh, you would find that you would be punished for absolutely no reason you would you know like absolute like 
guys just for being a person you'll be punished like for the smallest things you know you find yourself working there's a time like in grade eight we frog jumped guys if i tell you the distance you'll be shocked the next day we were so sore like we were our bodies were hurting and it was just something else and then there was another time i don't know what we did this prefect just came in and said no grade eight have booked you and we worked guys we worked for us the um, the punishment that she gave us was to water and then like at when you water the stick must enter and if you look at the place that she told us to water and we were just like i think eight you know ah, like we were so tired and oh oh uh ugh, oh oh god give me a minute give me a minute even till date i don't understand why it was necessary to make us go through that okay like i don't i i still don't get it so the thing is that we were always tired and some of us like i wasn't really like the the top most student in class you know i was already like struggling so like that just made it even worse because i was always tired i couldn't study i was always dozing so my performance went from bad to worse because of the same like i was always scared like who which which next prefect to come in and just say i booked you you are working you know it was just honestly mind-boggling to think someone would just enjoy seeing you work seeing you tour like to be honest i don't have like any grudges towards those i think for a long time i actually did you know when you see someone pop up on facebook and this was like one of those people that made you go to if you go through certain things and you're you're like cringing to even look at their photo because like the picture still raw in your head and you're just still hurt from you know the pain that this person made you feel because it was real like i felt this i was 12 years old you made me go through things like i was you know th you made me work like i was 30 years old because some of those punishments were really like we carried black soil we you know like it was just too much you know for a for a 12 year old's body to handle i was always tired i was exhausted in as much as i can blame you know people for my grades going down but i blame you yes i do uh-uh <laughs> you know but then um can't lie there's honestly still so much emotions that i'm still dealing with to be honest because of the same because you know like certain things are so normalized and they are not like they're actually not normal like that whole experience was not normal nothing about it was normal and i get it you know it was tradition it was passed down from one generation to the next one senior to the next and for a long time like it was so normalized to treat juniors like that to treat people like that because they're in a grade lower than you so you can be abusive yes abusive because that was abuse you know like it was normalized to behave a certain way simply because someone is in a grade lower than you you are a senior they are a junior you're a grade 10 11 12 they're a grade 8 or 9 you know you're you are a grade 12 so you know you are the all high and mighty and these are like below you it was so normalized for a very long time but then like I feel like for most of us that went through that, we really need to start addressing these things and actually start healing. Because I feel like those experiences have shaped some of us. You know, some of us behave a certain way because of those experiences. And we can't even tell. Like, we don't even know. I feel like for me, it took a lot and it took a very long time. But then I just thank God that I actually started seeing the, you know... I started seeing the situation for what it was and i looked back and said hold up mm -mm. <laughs> you know so i feel like um we really need to start healing we really need to start addressing the trauma that these experiences caused 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 you know I went one day for me i'm still hurting there are certain parts that still hurt you know like why did that person make me because for me, like, there was even this, uh, I won't mention what title she was, but she was a prefect. 
she disliked like for no reason you don't know me i'm 12 years old you're probably like 17 18 even 19 maybe you know you as i don't know but i was like she really did not like me she really bullied me and she was a prefect like she she would even lie on me sometimes like no i caught you doing this like bro you, you like what you know like you didn't ah there's this one time story you know i caught you like looking under my skirt like ah, huh? you know like it was crazy like she really did not like me and i knew that she didn't like me and for no reason bro like i was just trying to survive like trying to you know live through the day you know i'm already tired from one punishment you're taking me to the next punishment for no reason like she made me like she would make me kneel and sing like she was just she bullied me you know like for absolutely no reason there was this one time i went like it was cold and the my class perfect told me no you need to go get a jersey because it's very cold because i had issues with my chest when i i would like my chest would get congested so she told me go get a jersey so i found that uh my dorm was locked so uh i decided oh let me use a window and get in you know like <laughs> guys she saw me well, what are you doing in the like she was literally my worst nightmare you know she was literally my worst nightmare and i feel like it's only now that i've you know like like what did i ever do to this person like what you know like what what's taking place you know like what did i ever do to you like bro like you know and it's just now that i've actually like sat down and actually said no no there was nothing right about that i was you know i was worth being treated nicely i wasn't you know i didn't deserve that i didn't deserve that because i'm a I'm, I'm a child of god and god loves me like why would you treat me like that you know like so many emotions so many emotions and i feel like some of us really need to start addressing the things that we went through in boarding school and start calling them out for what they are bullying abuse i still have PTSD <laughs> from those experiences and yeah like honestly they were bad so um bullying differs because uh obviously the bullying in the u.s what we watch on you know these videos and what we see in the uh, american movies is very different from the bullying in our african society and what i'm talking about is bullying because it was so normalized and there was nothing seen as wrong you know and even like the teachers they would play such like they would like place a blind eye you know i don't even know if the ninja have used this correct but they would play a blind eye you know like they are seeing that these things are happening they're seeing that these kids are really like going through it but they didn't care and you know like for a very long time i actually thought it was okay because i went on to become a senior and i would exhibit some of these you know behaviors these animalistic behaviors because that was animal i'm sorry but why are you <laughs> you know being so mean to someone who who has done literally nothing to you and i'm calling even myself like i'm calling myself out because i found myself behaving in such a manner you know like and i'm so sorry mwandi if you were my junior and i was mean to you or i said something that i was, wasn't supposed to say to you you know i'm just, i'm really really sorry and i'm asking for your forgiveness because there was nothing right about being mean to you for absolutely no reason even if you were wrong you know that was uncalled for and there was always a better way to correct you as my junior and i i didn't know better i honestly didn't and i'm just asking that um you forgive me and you know some of these experiences might have shaped you as a person and i want to take full responsibility and say i am sorry if you if you want you can even text me on any of my platforms and say lusekelo i didn't like how you treated me lusekelo i didn't like how you talked to me kiki this behavior you showed me i was not okay with it i 
I will apologize even in the DM. Like, that's how sorry I am because I know how it feels to be treated like that. And I wish I knew better. Okay? Baby girl, there was nothing wrong with you. There was, you didn't do anything wrong. I was wrong. Me. So, you didn't deserve that. And I'm sorry. One more time. So guys, the bullying was just so extreme. Okay, it was so bad. There was a time, like, I'm just giving you some of the things that I went through. Um, Like, I'm just sharing some of my experiences so that you, you just, you know, like, let's talk. So some of my experiences were just, I, I mean, when I dare say horrific, like, those were horrible experiences because like there was a time i like we, we were traveling back from school like school had closed and this great wolf made me stand from my chair which my parents paid for okay stand and she sat there because she came late and the chairs had run out so i didn't have a seat the whole way from school to home and it's like far. It was like in another province, my school. It was far. It was hours of driving. That's, if I tell you that it was bad, it was bad. Imagine, like you do such a thing, you don't even feel bad. You know, it was, it was so much worse. Like there were certain things that I went through that, you know, I feel like they were so bad that my brain has just decided to blot them out of my, you know, my system because like they were just so bad, you know? Um, yeah. If you know that you're like me and you went through these things, dear, my love, there's something you need to do. You and I need to do and that's heal that address these issues i'm not saying go to people and that and you know confront them no you bullied me you did what you can i don't know but i'm not saying you go do that what i'm just saying is for yourself also i'm talking to me also here um forgive okay forgive these people just like you they didn't know you know, in as much as, you know, we had a conscious, you know, we were young and we were excited and some people in that excitement, they didn't know what they were doing. They decided, you know, they were mean. And yes, Mwandi, like, I'm not even, th these were real. Like, for me, Mwandi, these experiences were real and no one can come and tell me otherwise. No one can even bully me into thinking I'm making, like... I'm exaggerating or, or I don't have the right to feel how I'm feeling. I felt I went through these things and they are real to me and they hurt me. You know, they shaped me into a person that I didn't want to become, you know, and I ended up hurting other people because of these things that I went through. And by no means am I, you know, like blaming people for how I became, but then like they shaped me, those experiences shaped me. Okay. And these things hurt really bad okay so like, um, i chose to forgive because it's good for me you know forgiveness is a very spiritual thing and there are days obviously when you wake up and it hurts and you blame that person to say why did you make me go through that that's where god comes in and this uh, forgiveness is a decision and i decide to make that decision every time i remember the hurt the pain the bullying you know um sometimes the threats you know i'm here okay so you might be one of those people that made me go through one or two things i'm joking <laughs> uh i forgive you honestly i don't hold anything against you i know you were also just young and you know, the thing is that some people are just naturally like that. They are bad people. We can't lie. Like, let's let's not cap. Like, they are bad people. But even those people that were just like that, like, naturally are just like that and just wanted to be mean for, like, I forgive you too. Yeah. Because I know that I need it. Okay. To move on, I need to forgive. 
and i'm still addressing and so should you like address these things if you know that you went through the, these sim like similar experiences some of them might be different because obviously we went we might have gone to different schools and you know with different cultures and all you experience different things and worse might have happened to you or even similar or even you know just address them don't nyantidida how these things make you feel made you feel or the things that you went through i just want you to look within yourself and address them like they are real okay your feelings are valid just like me address them okay yeah so that was like experience number obviously i went through some of like horrible things but yeah now let's go to the set that was number one about boarding school number two for me so from grade eight to grade 12 it was all girls schools okay so my parents thought it was the best thing <laughs> this thing i'm going to talk about mm, mm -hmm, guys the homosexuality in these schools you think you're taking your child to a single sex school because obviously they are surrounded by their fellow girls or their fellow boys and you think oh my child oh oh dear parents you don't know now let me tell you guys like let's not you know like pretend like we know especially us who went to like to boarding schools when I was in grade eight, Kyla was new. I was what? It was disgusting. I was like, "Oh my god, what is this?" Cause it was everywhere. Like, like they would, you know, like it was so normalized. It was like almost everybody, like you know, uh, <laughs> it was you know. So when I was in grade eight, I was like, "Ew, gross!" And you know, by the because i was exposed to it over like over and over again it became normal it became so normal seeing you know two girls you know being touchy two girls you know doing what they what they are not supposed to do but then like it became so normal it just did because i was you know you once even if you are young so long as you are feeding on certain things they become normal. That's just how the mind is. That's why the Bible says um, we we should we should renew our minds. But then me, I was renew my I was renewing my mind with homosexuality, so it became normal. <laughs> you know, like you'd see seniors being touchy, and some of them would even call themselves like Bay Boo Shani. You know, just you know such things. You, you know, some of them were even like a family, like not family, like all oh, my sister, but no, like man, woman, kids. Yeah. So like I was seeing that every day and, you know, because I was feeding on that every day, even if I didn't want, so long as I was feeding on it. And by then I don't even think I was saved. Like it just became normal. By the time I was in grade 9, by the time I was in sec grade 8, second term, normal stuff, okay? And to be honest, uh, the, the Holy Spirit has just dropped this uh, in my spirit. That's a spirit. That's a spirit. And, you know, like, <laughs> even, like, that's a spirit in these same-sex boarding schools. There's this spirit, there's this spirit and it lingers around and it has not been addressed and people pay a blind eye. So it's free to do whatever it wants because us who've left that environment, we're not taking change. We've decided to keep our mouths shut as if we didn't go through these things. Okay. We, sh we are not addressing that spirit. That's why it, things, things have not changed. By the time I was reaching grade 9, I was a full-pledged member of this society, you know, and I'm not going to hide because I actually, like, struggled, you know, because of the environment that I was in. Like, I'll give you my full experience. Like, uh, for me, I just also thank God for my mom because my mom prays. When I was in grade 12, I used to struggle a lot with my teeth. 
in my eyes so my mom came to pick me up one time and um she i don't know if we were going to a dentist or an optician one of the two so she was like um the second i had a dream about you and you were literally indulging in homosexuality you were doing these funny funny things and yeah so eh, like when she when she told me that i refused you guys i refused i was like me me nah i was like no i don't know what you're talking about how oh, i refused because you know um after that i was very troubled because it was it was starting to you know like oh i've normalized something that is not normal i've normalized something that is not normal it's like my mom planted a seed immediately she said that okay fast forward later on i act i actually like after grade 12 because that was in grade 12 i i actually told my mom to say no mommy to be honest like these are the things that obviously like i don't have a problem with because like they're like normal and oh and my mom like quoted scripture to me she read the word to me and she said no and one thing i love about my mom is she didn't like condemn and say oh you are different why are you even accepting such things why are you what what what, what? you know in as much as she reprimanded me she did it in a very calm voice she didn't judge me she didn't condemn me and she really planted a seed and she she quoted scripture she quoted scripture you know where the word condemns the action and and all and that was planting a seed in me it was it, it started destroying the many years of what you know the exposure i got in boarding school to that thing had done to me because the word of god is sharper than a double-edged sword and anything that is exposed to the word of god has to fall okay so sometimes you might not see the results of you know your prayer or what there and then but it's doing something so don't stop praying because if it wasn't for my mom doing that i don't think i would have been here imagine because sin grows imagine at that time if i was like how would i have been now concerning the same so god is just shedding light on these things and just exposing you know them for what they are and that's demonic and god is awesome because even if the devil took a thousand years building something and growing something in you him is just a touch it's just an encounter and all those things fall off and that's what's beautiful about god and it's not too late to heal it's not too late to start you can start now and god is awesome because he is faithful the bible says he is faithful and he does what he says he will do and that's one thing that has been a highlight for me highlight yeah sometimes english i mean i'm a calendar babe i'm a tonga babe <laughs> so i'm just trying to you know just give you you know what has where i am now and just you know share these experiences with you because i know that there's someone out there that needs to hear this you know you're doing great you know god is waiting god loves you and god is still you know god yeah so with that being said i know i've I've talked a lot and this is a long video let's end here for today thank you so much for watching it's been me your favorite youtuber your favorite tiktoker Missy Kelo. so thank you so much for watching please subscribe please um like share comment you know you might not know who you are helping by sharing and let's do life together let's help people together you and me so thank you so much until next time bye